engineers and electrical uh, safety. So what is NFE? It's all about creating awareness on electrical safety. It was born in the month of March. So we are nearing one year. Uh, we have achieved many, many milestones in the last 11 months, I would say, uh, 11 months. And uh, we are considered to be one of the fastest growing uh, society in India, where we have more than 1,000 members, a lot of electrical consultants, architects, contractors, manufacturers, they're all joined together. And we expect it to grow over 2,000 to 3,000 in the next couple of months. Uh, NFE again, we've been crusading, uh, you know, the topic on uh, better tomorrow, making our nation electrically safe. And our vision is very clear to make every electrical installation free of accident, such as electrocution and fire due to short circuits and uh, thus contributing to the saving of lives and property and supporting sustainable development of mission we shall strive to achieve our vision through getting accredited for products and personal certification this is something that's very strong agenda for our uh, president and this personal certificate we shall focus on the electrical safety by design manufacturing installation and maintenance of electrical product Installation, installation by competent, I underline this, uh, this is very much required in India. Installation by competent, qualified manpower using quality resources, including product, process, and procedures. That's the mission of the NFE. What we do? We are going around creating awareness on electrical safety, improve skill of practic uh, practicing electrical practicing electrical engineers, improve safety measures followed in the industry, introduce modern safety measures of in engineering and improve quality of electrical installation. I would urge uh, those who are not yet become a member of NFE and uh, today being a free uh, webinar, I'm sure that many were non-members who are joined today, please visit our website and very simple, there is a uh, link there become a member less than a minute you can become a member we have individual membership we have corporate membership for all the OEMs and we have a SME for Indian uh, small scale industry we have completed um, you know this month uh, this year I would say in January we spoke about our, an earth electrode and we did a um, you know, uh, seminar uh, in uh, and Nagpur, uh, we just completed one more uh, seminar in Vadodara yesterday, well attended, over 160 professionals attending the program. So we have upcoming uh, seminar now in Chennai on 16th, that is next uh, uh, Friday, and followed by 23rd in Goa and Mumbai on 15th. So those who are from this region, uh, if you are not yet uh, received the invitation, please do join. Uh, in Chennai, we'll be doing it in Radha region, Coimbedu. Uh, so please uh, uh, do attend and you can meet us. All the speakers will be there. And uh, just recently we completed on a CA regulations on electrical safety audit. And 27th of January, Mr. Appavu conducted CA regulation. Nice me. All of distribution companies and stakeholders in minimizing fire and electrocution, well attended by our um, members of NFE. Today, we are talking about power quality and harmonic distortion. Why this subject? I, my name is Dominic here and uh, I'll be hosting this and we have a great experts today joining us to discuss on this subject. So today we are specifically clear up what is for quality and harmonic distortion. We look at why they happen, what problem they cause, and most importantly, how we can fix them. Thank you so much for joining us and your participation shows you are you care about the quality of power and the system. And now let's get started. Feel free to put up your question answer. We have the uh, if you look at below, there is a Q and A box. 
uh, do not put it on chat box. Chat box will be a difficult for us to record your question. I would request every participant to put their question. Our moderator, Mr. Gopakumar, will uh, take up this question and make it more interactive. And uh, we have our president, Mr. Gopakumar, today, uh, and he's the founder of Cape Electric, Cape uh, uh, Power Productions, uh, OBO Betterman, and LP Consultant International. He's also a very active member uh, technical committee of BAS, ETD 20, ETD 30. ATA 50 and also a member of National Building Code and is quite active in International Electrical Code, uh, TC64, TC81, AC37. So he's a well known face and he's been there uh, in every webinar. I think uh, we have done more than 300 webinars and quite well known personality we have and also he's the president of NFE. We have a great speaker. Uh, he is joined us from Dubai. Very rich experience, Mr. Hari Balas Brahmanyam. He is a passionate energy management expert with over 30 years of experience in India and Middle East. He has relentlessly served customers in the region by providing technical consultancy beyond the business development profile he handles. Having worked with many European energy management and power quality measurement companies, he is continuing his support to provide customers in India. He believes only continuous knowledge sharing can provide perennial improvement and increased energy efficiency among consumers. Hari is thorough in his energy management solution that blend the appropriate device for monitoring communication possibilities and software with result oriented analytics is very much interested in energy management for quality and residual current monitoring which is encapsulate the full cycle of energy management activity i now welcome uh, uh, the opening remarks by our uh, uh, president mr gokumar then followed by mr hari on the subject that he will speak so over to mr uh, gokumar sir if you are there we would like to a few words before he begins. Uh, good morning, all participants. Today we are uh, making uh, a, a webinar on a new subject probably in our uh, platform. So far we were uh, talking always about uh, electrical safety. This time we are uh, talking about power quality. We have a great speaker and uh, first, uh, you know, without wasting time, let us start the presentation. You can share the presentation and start it, please. So yeah, I will. Say, okay, sir. You will go on mute. Yeah, I will. Should I share the screen? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. visible. Full screen. It's visible. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, namaste, everyone. I'm really excited um, to be in this group. In fact, on a Saturday, uh, close to the afternoon, I see such a good attendance on this kind of a webinar. Um, I am really thrilled to be with you all. And um, thank you for giving me this opportunity um, to share my thoughts on the power quality and harmonics um, in this webinar. Thank you very much, NFE. Um, but just I, I start going into it. We have, uh, I, I have an analogy of water quality. Usually water is a commodity which is uh, distributed, stored, and then again distributed uh, into various uh, consumers. So the quality of the water, what we get, can get transformed at every level. So over a period of time, so the water comes again, it is saved for maybe few days or then or and then it is or few hours and then distributed again. But in case of electricity, we as we consume, uh, generate electricity, we also consume electricity at the same rate, assume that we are also polluting the electricity. Yeah, that the polluting the grid, in other words. So. This is a very fast phenomenon which is happening 
on the power quality on the electrical side so so this is always the analogy in fact when we what we see is the water quality we see it but the, we do not most of the time we don't see it as a quality of water visually but it, it is in uh, other forms maybe by some shutdowns or uh, through some burnout of some components and things like that so that's what we are going to discuss today um the term power quality refers to a wide variety of electro electromagnetic phenomenon that characterizes voltage and current at a given time at a given location on the power systems and it can be classified as conducted and radiated and we will discuss most of the uh, conducted low frequency phenomenon like harmonics voltage fluctuations voltage interruptions voltage imbalance um uh, and things like that and also with the respective standards what we can follow so this is what we are going to uh, do today so this is uh, for a very simple uh, system assuming that we have one of the user with non linear loads and another user with a linear loads from a network so what happens here in this case is when when a linear load non linear load uses gives an output or pollutes a frequency uh, harmonic like this or the waveform like which is on the left side of the screen the right side user gets a different kind of he too doesn't get a sine wave in other words you know you, you see a distorted sine wave on the other side say for example i can show you the screen again in before the user one uses non linear loads and because of that he pollutes uh he discharges uh a non linear current waveforms into this into the uh grid and because of that the voltage gets corrupted and then that voltage provides a current so provides as a current source for the linear loads which is the user 2 and then he also gets a very bad waveform so this is a very simple way of uh informing that the harmonics can be uh flowing from one load or one consumer to the other uh where it can affect the performance of the machinery for no fault of the uh, linear load consumers yeah this also has uh, repercussions down below so what makes the harmonics flow from one to the other which means we have something called we call something as an impedance of these circuits upstream and downstream can potentially have an effect on the harmonics how it is transmitted to the other consumers so if the grid impedance the grid is very dynamic normally the impedance of the grid changes continuously depending on the load depending on the connections um then in these situations then we also have the weak grid and robust grid the strong grid probably can assume or can observe certain amount of garbage from our in from the industries but the weak grid cannot do so the position of the industries or the load in the grid also matters whether it is in the weaker grid or in the robust grid how do we do it we will find it out in in the ne next coming slides as well yeah so this is the robust grid in many places if we have a very good grid then we can also we are we can also throw some harmonics which is essential for us to make our efficient systems with some kind of vfds or some kind of drives so that we get a higher production but at the same time if the grid is weak and if we use the same kind of equipment then it can potentially not only affect us it can also affect the nearby consumers who are going to do it so that's the that's the part which i wanted to put it across whatever it is if you can't measure we can't improve it that's what we say that's what lord kelvin said so when a power quality is bad what can happen is what i wanted to say when a power quality is bad we can have tripping in the tripping in your systems we can have uh, control systems hanging up we can have production failures or batch failures in batch batch processing industries this is much more um 
much more sensitive because they lose many times they lose the whole raw material what they put in yeah so it becomes very very important that the batch processes happen continuously especially something like in a paper industry for example or a pharma industry where we have batch processes and you put the raw material and then for some reason of of unknown reasons of of power quality if something fails then we also get into the trouble of losing their raw material yeah so that's that's the uh, thing and harmonics or the power quality can also reduce the lifetime of the operating equipment um, in fact many times it so happens we tripping happens without any reason so that is also a possibility of doing it and moreover harmonics or the power quality effects can cause heating in the system and in turn reach up to the stage of fire as well in some times yeah so but this needs to be taken care and it needs to be addressed very very urgently as we have more and more loads um coming up with which can throw harmonic potentially into the grid um so i can classify these power quality parameters into frequency magnitude of supply flicker unbalance voltage harmonics and current harmonics and then once in a way uh, events which can happen as voltage interruptions sag swells and transients so we will see some of these uh, points over here let us see the sags and swells which is very common a sag or a swell is a very short term voltage drop um below 90% or the swell is a voltage high below above 110% of the nominal voltage uh, these are all as per standards or given for that we will discuss see those standards also en5160 and is17036 i think it is an equivalent of en5160 in india um and then we also have um 90% of the nominal value which when the voltage reduces for a very short time for a half cycle to 1 minute so this can also be classified as sag that's what in the next slide it says a voltage dip is classified as from 10 milliseconds to 1 minute as a voltage sag and then beyond 1 minute a volt it is it can be called as an under voltage also terminologies vary from um country to country manufacturer to manufacturer but the the what remains is the crux of the information that there is a voltage under voltage happening between 10 milliseconds and it can go higher and higher up to whatever the time we have say for example voltage dips are generally considered sags or considered as an event which happens between 10 milliseconds which is half cycle to 1 minute in a 50 hertz network um on the right side of the screen i have something called as itec so sebima curve is again a standard which gives a nominal voltage working performance and the critical voltage areas so when the voltage goes for a short time the x axis is the time and y axis is the percentage of the nominal voltage and then if there is an event which is happening within the critical voltage area whether it is over voltage or under voltage then we can probably find out how many events are happening on the over voltage area and how many are happening under the under voltage area and then we could take possible uh, possible solutions which can take which can which we can uh, see to um, reduce these kind of events so that the equipments what we use are safer say for example if a voltage low occurs very constantly for 100 milliseconds i'm just giving an example and the voltage goes low around 50% for a, for very few cycle 100 milliseconds is five cycles approximately so the our motors can take higher current during these times the vfds can probably will not know where the why the voltage is going low and then it can behave erratically so these kind of things can be sorted out by plotting it properly in these kind of a curve and understanding how these things occur 
can be much more easier for us. So that's about the sags and swells on the system. Um, a sag, as I said, is the voltage level going for a very short time. In, in, the, screen, in the screen, what you have, the voltage going low of around 73 volts from a 230 volts to 730 volts. And then it goes back in a, within 302 milliseconds. So 302, 300 milliseconds, it goes back. So this is a phenomenon which can happen in these networks. Or the swell here, which is going up to for one second. Yeah, 1,000 milliseconds. Yeah, one second. So up to a voltage of 284. So this is also not good. And the previous one is also not good for us in sag and swell so this is this is how we can understand sags and swells sag and swell are most common in our networks when the when the grid is weaker when the transformer is fully loaded or working to its capacity and a very small increase in a uh, short term increase in loads or a starting of a motor can also create a sag in the network what we receive what we are under um and then it comes to a voltage interruption voltage interruption is usually defined as when the voltage goes below 10 percent of the nominal voltage and then it is said to be a uh, voltage interruption and this can also be should also be recorded and found out and the, generally it, it happens as a, a power supply failure uh, where you don't get the voltage and then the voltage goes to zero. But generally, it is not zero percent. It is actually 10 percent of the nominal voltage where these equipments are designed for. Um, current and voltage and balance is the next topic. This is again, it, if the phase shifting is not 120 degrees or the current is not equal in all the three phases, or the voltage is not equal in all the three phases can have a an effect on the systems as well. So there is a ways to ascertain um, what is the unbalance in the voltage, what is the percentage unbalance in the voltage and the current, and then we can probably take action based on that. So. Um, when when the current is not equal, yesterday's yesterday someone was asking me i have a current in a motor consuming 300 ampere in one phase 250 in others and then i have 225 in another phase so this is a clear unbalance what we have seen and then we have we have to ask them to go and do some more um, some more inspection on the motors to check why it is consuming differently it was a star delta startup so this is these kind of uh, things in unbalance can also cause um, a problems in the circuit and harmonics or the power quality can also play a vital role in creating an unbalance in the circuit so that's that's how especially when we use more number of electronic lighting systems in single phase uh, three phase circuits then and if it is not distributed we have more uh, problems to come as the neutral currents can potentially increase and uh, i i have an experience when when the neutral current uh, was increasing and then the neutral cable burned and then they said oh this current is going high put two runs of neutral cables yeah so these kind of uh, solutions is not actually a solution it is only a, some kind of a fix because it is in no time the second cable also start getting heated up and then starts burning up so th this is a this is a very common phenomenon we need to understand on the unbalance of the circuit transience is the next topic which happens usually uh, within a cycle so within a within a sine wave cycle or within a half cycle 10 millisecond well, uh, time the transients can be oscillatory or it can reach to a peak and then reduce it also. So both these kind of transients are not good for the systems because the insulation gets weaker when these kind of transients happen commonly in a circuit. So wherever there is an insulation fab can easily weak 
can get ruptured there and then it can create a short circuit so that's that's the next part of uh, why transient should not be avoided so i wanted to also take a time to see how the transients are measured in the uh, in the whole system or how do we measure the transients in this case um, say for example in a in a normal sine wave form we can have we take samples say for example we take every uh, 40 microsecond a sample within the 10 millisecond uh, half wave or 20 millisecond full wave form then the transient can be happening depending on in a normal sine wave you have every 40 microsecond the value is fixed based on the voltage but if there is a change of 10 percent plus or minus then it can be classified as a transient at that particular sample so that is that we call it as an absolute uh, sample and the difference between the two samples the delta between the two samples is also fixed in a sine wave. So if that again varies, that can also be classified as a transient. So that is how the transients are uh, calculated in any of the uh, metering equipments in this case. Yeah. So that's that's about the transients. Um, coming to our favorite subject of uh, harmonics. Harmonics are uh, are the superficial. Uh, different frequencies or the multiples of the frequencies of the fundamental so if you have 50 100 150 200 250 so it are ranked as one class fundamental frequency is 50 and then it goes 100 frequency is uh, second harmonic third fourth fifth fifth is 250th frequencies and then we start getting these kind of harmon when waveforms superimposed on the frequency thereby the original frequency what we get is getting distorted so i will i will go back to the slide say for example you have a third fifth and seventh harmonic the blue color waveform is the main waveform but when these frequencies of third fifth and seventh harmonic are superimposed on the fundamental waveform or the then you have a problem because the fundamental waveform changes uh, according to the noise and the amplitude of the harmonic currents what we have yeah so how do we classify the harmonics there are only till now most of us know a parameter called total harmonic distortion which takes into account all the harmonics present in the waveform yeah it means there is a um, phenomenon called fast fourier theorem which is applied on the frequency sample what we are getting and then we divide those uh, frequencies different frequencies with the fast uh, fourier theorem so that's how the harmonic is calculated and then these harmonic are totalized with with a formula and divided by an x i will show you the formulas right now so then it is called as total harmonic distortion so in in a normal case if um i'll one minute yeah so you have a spectrum of frequencies harmonic frequencies with which you have 1 to 63rd or 1 to 30 and then based on these frequencies and the harmonic content we calculate the total harmonic distortion so total harmonic distortion is calculated for the harmonic frequencies say so which is in this formula which is said as m the ordinal frequency what we measure that is depends on the fourier theorem how we use it and then out of this we take the m uh, yeah up to the frequency of m m is basically it can be 50th harmonic 63rd harmonic depending on the device or 30th harmonic or 15th harmonic depending on the measurement device and then they calculate based out of the fundamental value say uh, i fundamental or v fundamental so which is based on the existing load yeah so existing load so this happens and then it we get a value for thd total harmonic distortion 
in the later as the IEEE 519 evolution happened then they also introduced the terminology called as TDD total demand distortion so the total demand distortion means it takes based on the value called IL for the current especially not for the voltage but uh, TDD is only for current and based on IL, IL is basically the average current over a period of time. Say, for example, 12 months average is considered as a load current. Say, for example, so that you know this is your average load and what kind of harmonic you are generating based on your loading factor rather than on the fundamental where it can be either low or high. I will also show you uh, a simple screen here how a load current can um, load current with a total harmonic distortion THD is shown here. If you see the red color graph is the cur load current and uh, THD is the blue uh, blue current. So if you see when the current goes high, THD goes low. When the current goes low, the THD is going higher and higher. Especially you can see at the end uh, in this kind of in this kind of area where the THD is slightly higher. So which means can we take THD as a parameter, total harmonic distortion as a parameter to ascertain that whether we have a more harmonic or not? No, it is not possible. We may have to take the parameter called TDD. If you look at it, TDD varies along with your loads most of the time. So if your load is high, then the TDD also goes high. And if the load is low, TDD also goes low. So in this kind of phenomenon, now I will try to compare between THD and TDD also here. You see here? it. So for what you will do the compensation, whether you will do the compensation for a total harmonic distortion or a total demand distortion. This is a question which I uh, put forth for us um, to think about it yeah maybe we can uh, discuss it over a period of time or by the end of the uh, session as well so we have the total harmonic distortion and total demand distortion which we need to understand so that we can take appropriate action total giving a solution with total harmonic distortion cannot give us the right solution this is what is my opinion we can always check this out but total harmonic distortion is also comprised of all the harmonics built in. So when we are measuring THD or TDD, it is very important for us to know up to what frequency or what harmonic content these THD is calculated. So this is very, very important. Say, for example, you, you have a device which calculates THD. And it, cal it only finds harmonics up to 15th harmonic, which means the device should naturally be taking only, considering only up to 15th harmonic for THD calculation. So this is a very important point which we need to understand. So while we measure the harmonics, while we measure THD, we need to know up to what harmonic, uh, ordinal harmonics these device measure and then we how it is the THD and TDD is calculated. So this is about THD and TDD for us to understand. Now I come to the standards. I always say um, standards, adhering to standard is not a choice and it is in fact it is the lifeline for all the electrical systems. Yeah, And I'm, I'm very happy that NFE is uh, promoting so much of safety in the systems and I, I'm very really excited to be a part of uh, NFE uh, for this matter at least. Yeah, so this is a, there, there are various harmonic limits, there are compatibility levels and then testing and measuring standards. So there are quite a lot of standards which are already developed in IEC. It is already developed a standard for measurement that is always a compatibility uh, measurement compatibility levels for uh, the equipments are also there as an IEC standards uh, set in over here. Say for example, in a in a circuit, the incoming 
level or the voltage characteristics in the public grid or in the distribution network is characterized as EN5160 or IS17036, I think, for Indian standards, yeah, um, which is a characteristics of the voltage. And then when it comes to the PCC level, where the consumer is uh, taking power into his system, that is called as point of common coupling, there the system like standards like IEEE 519 is applied. And then at the compatibility level of the equipment, you have 61000-2-4. So these are all the power quality limits where EN5160 will talk about voltage frequencies and stuff like that. IEEE 519 will talk about current harmonic and voltage harmonics. Um, the 61000-2-4 will talk about the equipment level uh, harmonic emissions which can be possible. Say, for example, I wanted to say, if an equipment manufacturer says that I am IEEE 519 compliant, that is a PCC, yeah? But how come that standard can be applied to that equipment which is in the consumer premises? So in this case, we have a point that the what we can understand is if there is no other loads in the consumer's premises and he is directly connecting it at the point of common coupling, then this complies to IEEE 519. Yeah. So we will also go through see the IEEE 519 standards uh, in a very brief manner in the coming slides yeah so this is this is just the how it says so the more the loads more the ev charging more um, uh, more the vfd loads coming in then we also have to see these standards are complied by the equipments um, and it is meticulously followed in uh, doing it many of the european countries have different standards undotted or being followed but uh, in India, we are still catching up with, you know, with those kind of standards and implementing it. The implementation of the standards comes from the project stage and not from the operation stage. If you don't do it at the project stage, then we lose it at the operation stage phenomenally. And then most of the time operations would not have budgets to, uh, you know, upgrade the systems most of the times yeah or that would be a lot of uh it it goes through its own difficulties that's that's how it is so there are um few standards here which we will discuss uh 61000-4-30 which is testing and measurement techniques for power quality measurement methods en5160 which is the characteristics of the public distribution voltage um 61000-2-4 which is EMC compatibility of all the um, industrial plants and the equipments uh, which they are using. And very interestingly, the more the most talk about standard IEEE 519, in earlier, in 2014, it was called as recommended practices and requirements for harmonic control in electrical power systems. Now they have come back and said, no, no, it is no more something like a guideline, but we call that as a standard for harmonic control in electric power system. So there is a shift, the way in which it, the wordings of the standard head title itself, which means it needs to be implemented. As I said, it is no more a choice. It is no more a guideline. It has to be implemented in the consumer premises. So that's, that's how it is done. Um, I talk about EN 5160 is the, as I said, it is the main voltage characteristics, which talks about frequency, magnitude, waveform, and the symmetry of the uh, three phase voltages. This is what it talks and it has its own limits. It is measured over period of seven days time. So usually EN 50, 160 is measured over seven days period. So we the frequency is measured every 10 seconds uh, and then the magnitude waveform voltage is also measured every 10 seconds and then there are different standards for it uh, different limits for it um, and then for short positive of time i am just 
giving only the headlines so that i can discuss more about i triple 519 we can also discuss in uh, later on uh, if you need more information i will be happy to share with you on en5160 and 61000-2-4 so 61000-2-4 which is for equipment it talks about voltage deviations it talks about short term interruptions it talks about voltage unbalance it talks about interharmonics up to 50th order um en50 160 talks only about the voltage harmonics up to 25th order and then the transient over voltage so it can be classified as class 1 class 2 and class 3 as well the 61000-2-4 um now this is very important to know that there is a measuring standard for harmonic measurement which means how do we measure harmonic because not harmonic measurement is more of a calculation as i said it is a fourier theorem yeah so different people or different manufacturer could follow different calculation methodology and the sensing methodology so that there may not be much of a uniformity so that is why the standard specifies two class of devices called as class a and class s so class a means it is a legally valid uh, measurement methodology which can starts which can stand in court of law class s has given some kind of room for the manufacturers to go about their way yeah so that's that's how the class a and class s standards are defined uh, in in this particular standard so 61000-4-30 defines the correct measuring algorithms to be used in the instrument and it meets the highest performance and reliability of the measured values uh that is why it 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 i said that it can be in uh, it is legally valid class uh, class a standard yeah um and then you also talks about uh, different kinds of measurement can also be used by some kind of a lever leverage for the manufacturer and the electronic circuit so that those meters are called as class s so when a class a device two device of class a with same configuration is put in the same location or in the grid or in the circuit then it is supposed to measure and give the same kind of harmonic values um, both the sides yeah so both the device should give the same harmonic values so that's that's how the 61000-4-30 is designed it so it talks about um uh, IEEE 519 actually when it comes to it it actually talks about um, different kind of practices which clearly demarcates who is responsible for what so if the voltage harmonic is the responsibility of the distribution companies and the current harmonic because of the loads they generate current harmonics and they are the responsibility of the consumers so it very clearly uh, demarcates this and it goes to all the voltage levels so that is very important it it goes it goes at different stages of voltage level and it also goes at various stages of the where your grid is positioned which we'll be seeing it in the next slide so for the purpose of measuring harmonic when you are doing the harmonic measurement for IEEE 519 we need to use only class a device so this is very clearly defined in IEEE 519 um it should be measured in the point of common coupling that is where the transaction of power happens between utility and the consumer and it needs to be measured at that point and it has to be statistically evaluated for on a weekly basis and also on a daily basis there are limits specified for a weekly and also on a daily basis in the standard um say for example as i said here the class a device needs to be at point of common coupling and by doing this we are 
reducing we are reducing we are making the st- grid stronger in other words i can I, i will put it like this we may when we are complying to this uh, ieee 519 we are making the grids more stronger when the grids are becoming stronger we don't have any problems of voltage issues we don't have problems on breakdowns in our plants we don't have uh, we have a longer life of our equipment and machineries and we mitigate the risk of fire due to harmonics um, in in our system so there are quite a lot of benefits of following uh, standards like ieee 519 um, but thereby we make our life much more easier in running an operation um i uh, the ieee 519 gives a sampling you know it also tells you how the sampling should be done for calculating the harmonics and how the measurement should be done say for example it talks about a sampling should be done every 10 cycles and rms value calculated for every 10 cycles which is 200 milliseconds in a 50 hertz network so it, we we calculate rms values for every 200 milliseconds and we store data every 3 seconds averaged those 200 milliseconds over a period of 3 seconds and then we also have uh, averaged values for 10 minutes these value the 3 seconds values so that these are all stored for all the harmonics which means thd tdd and the and also the individual harmonics are stored and then done a, a st- statistical evaluation is done so how do we do the statistical evaluation measurement is done every 200 milliseconds as i said every 3 seconds it is aggregated and then on a daily basis we calculate the 99th percentile value so this is one statistical evaluation which is done and then it has its own limits so the daily evaluation of 99 percentile has its limits and then you have a 10 minutes value which is taken for uh, taken from the 3 seconds value aggregated and then again you calculate for a weekly evaluation of 99 percentile limits and 95 percentile limits why we are having these three values is the next question why should we do three statistical evaluation uh, in these calculations when the standard was formed they wanted to make sure that every kind of loads adheres to this so that's why a constant load can be very easy it can very easily pass in a a uh, 99 percentile daily values but weekly values they can potentially fail for example a textile unit can probably uh, can pass with 99 percentile evaluation limits but they might have troubles in weekly evaluation limits with 10 per 10 minutes values or vice versa for a furnace so in a furnace industry probably it can fail on a 99 percentile and uh, it can also um, pass sometimes on the 95th and 99 on a weekly evaluation so the amount of data what we are handling uh, with the standard is humongous yeah so which means the 3 second value what we are collecting on a daily basis per parameter so what all the parameters we collect tdd harmonic 50 so harmonic current harmonic and voltage harmonic that is 300 values for all the three phases um and 300 plus 300 600 300 values and then you have um what thd and tdd also yeah three phases so which means around 306 parameters for 3 seconds which means in a day you have 28800 samples per parameter and that needs to be percentile wise it should be calculated so it should fi- we should find a percentile for that and then compared with the table what is given in the standard for example i have uh, shown here the standard of um, the 120 to 69 kv what are the standards so tdd is having multiple limits depending on how you were loading is how you were uh, where you are in the grid is say for example 
if you are isc by il isc is the short circuit level at the point of common coupling and il is the average load over the 12 months period what we have consumed yeah which i have talked about when we are talking about tdd so depending on isc by il value that is the position of the strength as per the strength of the grid what you have at that point of common coupling the tdd value varies higher the standards thereby we have the um, higher the standard we have a um, higher the isc by il value you can have higher tdd values as limits so there are multiple limits which needs to be followed for the ieee 519 so as i said here you see total number of samples we can say 28800 out of which it can cross the limits 289 times yeah so approximately so there is a leverage in other words if i say that we can cross out of 28800 samples we can cross the limits roughly around 289 times whereas the same way when you consider it for a 10 minutes value for a weekly period then you have a sample per parameter 1008 samples and then you could probably have 10 overcuts for 99 percentile and and 50 overcuts for 95th percentile yeah so now why we need to see 3 seconds and 10 minutes data in an ieee 519 is the next question coming up you can see this graph here where you have a 10 second uh, values recorded for tdd and a 3 second values recorded for 3dd uh, it for tdd in graph in gray yeah 3 seconds value is in gray and the orange one is the uh 10 minutes value so the limits are different as i said the limits are different for 3 seconds uh values and for 10 minutes values so this gives a clear idea that if our voltage or the information is very much fluctuating then the limits are high and we can we can still follow we will be in a position to follow so there is no there are three limits which we need to consider for uh when we are considering when you are monitoring for ieee 519 yeah that, that's that's about this so in other words you can say the last one percentile value can be beyond a certain value so i have just put if there is a 3 seconds values how the 99 percentile times you are within should be within the limit and you have one percentile time you can be above the limit also to pass with an ieee 519 standard you know so this is this graph explains um, very clearly how the percentile calculation is done as well okay. now do i in say that ieee 519 is for all the circuit even if i am uh, having a generation in my circuit no it very clearly talks about if there is a distributed generation happening um greater than 10% then there is a, there are other current limits which needs to be followed um like ieee 1547 or 2800 can be applied but if the generation is less than 10% of the average load demand then we need to follow the ieee 519 so there is also a classification why i'm saying this is because now lot of industries are uh, consuming Uh, are also having solar power generation as a part of their system so if it is at site 10% uh, and more different standard should be followed if the solar generation is less than 10% then ieee 519 can be very well followed for this yeah so i'm before i close uh, i will talk about few more uh, parameters like um some of the myths what we understand here yeah what is the best sampling rate or accuracy what we can have while measuring harmonics or while measuring so very interestingly iec 61000-4-30 says sampling rate should therefore be at least twice the maximum frequency of the waveform which means it says 100 uh sampling cycle 100 sam 100 sampling uh, frequency 
100 hertz can be the sampling frequency but unfor but um, you know for 100 samples per cycle then you need to have 5 kilohertz so th this is a this is a very simple sampling frequency and the samples per cycle is basically the sampling frequency divided by the frequency is called as samples per cycle so for example if i have a 5 kilohertz signal or uh, sampling frequency then in a 50 hertz and 100 samples per cycle is what would come so sampling rate would be every 200 microseconds so that's that's how it is calculated uh, but there is no specific sampling frequency suggested by any standard till now on the uh, for calculating or measuring the harmonics so this is this is this is what i can say so probably i we would say uh, 512 samples for a very reasonable device or a 270 sam 256 samples can also be a reasonable for a good power quality meter and, um, all my mcc complies to ieee 519 this is another myth that is as i said an equipment manufacturer would say i comply with uh, ieee 519 which means when they consider no other loads, but they consider only one load, which is their equipment at the point of common coupling, then that is that is clearly defined as um, to be a within the range. Yeah, but that is should not be calculated. It should be actually act according to IEEE 61000-2-4. Yeah, so that's the second part of it and which needs to because these are all basic uh, information which I thought I should give. So as I said, THD and TDD, commonly used terminologies. Uh, TDD is depends on the IL and THD depends on the fundamental. So we will have differences where we have, uh, when we do a mitigation uh, activity for a harmonic with THD and TDD can produce different results. So we need to be aware of this as well. Yeah. Um, then connect PQ monitor for one day and check the compliance for IEEE 519. No, as I said, we that's a myth that I do the power quality monitoring for one day and then do a power quality study and say I am complying to the standard or not. No, we as I said, we have to take three kind of statistical evaluation. One is for one day and weekly. 95 percentile and 99 percentile which is defined in the standard so if the ieee 519 measurement has to be completed we need to have seven days of daily values and then one week of values to completely comply so you will have seven days pass or fail for a daily values and then you will have weekly values as well for 10 minutes taken every 10 minutes for for you to say uh, determine whether it is pass or fail as per the limits so this is this is just a small uh, information which i thought i should be able to give it so i think i'm i'm i slightly push forward myself to give room for more uh, discussions and i will leave it for a uh, leave it open to see that if there is any questions to be taken um so yeah, I would urge uh, participants to post, put your uh, question in Q&A box um, so that we can take the question. And uh, anybody wants to interact, raise your hand. Uh, there is a raise hand symbol is there. You can then we can probably you can have interact directly with the speaker and the moderator also. Yeah. Sir, what do you say? Uh, there, uh, there are two questions. Uh, there are a few questions. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to take some of the questions. But before that, I would like to ask a question uh, which is probably in generic nature. Yeah. Uh, uh, regarding uh, power, this, this harmonics. Yeah. So if you can unshare, it would be great. I will do it. I'll do it. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, normally in uh, in uh, other countries, when we go for this uh, IEC meetings and all, harmonics is not a big subject of discussion in those countries with respect to the point of common coupling or you know the uh, the distribution company or transmission company is concerned. So I had a few discussion with some of them, and what I understood is. Uh, 
the finally the equipment the connected equipment uh, or the electrical appliance is creating uh, harmonics and in those countries the amount of harmonics which these devices are generating has to have certain limit that means at the at the source itself the harmonic generation is limited once when the harmonic generation itself is limited the effect of this uh, harmonic into the entire network is also uh, automatically reduced whereas if i say that uh, in india uh, we don't uh, try to reduce at the point where it is created and we try to you know go for low quality product and produce more and more and more harmonics pump it into the entire or create uh, the entire network uh, you know with a kind of uh, unwanted uh, harmonics or power quality things and then we try to filter out at one point a lot of monitoring lot of filtering it's it's a kind of you know uh, not a healthy situation what is your uh, say on this <laughs> that's what i say um, when at the time of project that's what i said uh, during the discussion itself i at the time of a project if the right equipment is chosen and then it is normal in european countries to follow ieee 519 standard they don't if, if it is effortless in their specification whether they state or not it has to be followed the equipments needs to be 6100-2-4 certified these things automatically comes into picture whereas in the during the time of project as a part of the specification and it is meticulously followed but in our uh, country unfortunately we go behind reducing cost in some way or the other and then thereby we tend to get the components with a, with a, with a kind of it, this can solve our issue and we can go and do the project very quickly and then this kind of equipments invariably leaks into the system and starts getting installed and then we can't come, get out of it so easily <laughs> so so once you say that this particular x amount of drive is enough for me to run my plant rather than looking at whether i am using it in a in a more uh, you know less harmonic generating ways then in that sense we will have we we were we are still yet to be there in that kind of a way so we are still policing for harmonics if, if you look at it there are, we are looking for regulations to come in for harmonic regulations then we will follow but but in european countries or in american countries it is it is a, it is a normal system that follows that takes that i need to be following up the system in the standards so that's that's where the main difference comes in yeah that means the quality of the products are uh, uh, meeting certain uh, uh, distortion levels as a result the effect of the harmonics in the grid or in the in the system is quite less so in in that we look uh, if we don't uh, look at the initial cost uh, on a if we look only the running cost only the running cost in those countries would be lesser than our uh, cost which we are right. finding distribution loss correct because what will happen is once if they choose a the right equipment they don't have problems generating out of harmonics the you know the, the trippings amount of unwanted trippings or unknown trippings happening is less then that automatically saves a lot of money on their business in when it is running isn't it so so the, in that sense there is much of relatively lesser problems due to harmonics over there because they are following a reasonable standard um, in those kind of ways okay thank you thank you also you use the word uh, you know harmonics is like throwing garbage into a system Yeah. so each of these equipment is throwing garbage into the network and polluting the entire network and finally we try to put something at the at one point and try to filter it out as a result so <laughs> no, this is one way of handling but the inefficient way of handling uh, the energy cost is also going up day by day now getting energy itself or we are talking more about sustainability so it is the point of it is the time for the government to seriously think to implement uh, these uh, modern standards and ensure that uh, the products which is sold in the market are complying to the minimum levels am i correct uh, i would i would say more than the government it is up to the users to come forward and say i will follow this <laughs> if that comes in then automatically 
you know, government may not have much role in it because users themselves will clarify it. Once when we start policing these kind of regulations, they tend to find a different kind of a route. So it needs to come from the users, consultants who are uh, applying these, has to apply these standards properly in their uh, design stage. So then it could probably change the whole whole game. Okay, that's great. That's great. But uh, one last question from my side. Let's say, for example, in a, in a new project, uh, if if uh, all the devices are uh, you know which are which are in compliance to the latest IEC standards uh, with respect to harmonic emission are used, and in the same project, if they are not used, what will be the cost implication over a period of let's say ten years? Ha. It depends completely on where you are in the position in the grid and how you are using your own equipments. I'll give you a simple example. Um, one of the food industry which we came across, they had two big soft starters and few uh, juicer, yeah, a VFD where to drive some of the juicers. Basically, it's a food processing industry. So they had a lot of trouble and they, their VFDs had a lot of failures in their IO cards continuously. So they called the VFD guys and said, why is my IO cards failing? And then this guy comes and says, oh, this is because of surge and transient. You know what they did? They put surge suppressors at the incomer stage, at the main incomer in their place, in 220, 230 volts level. They put a lot of surge suppressors in various circuits. You know what happened? The IO card problem stopped. And then they started replacing surge suppressors every week. <laughs> So, so the, the, the kind of the design has become such a way that you move the problem from one to the other side, but you don't get rid of the problem. To do this, implementing the right device, following the standards meticulously at the beginning of the project becomes very, very important. Otherwise, we will be only moving the problem. So when we have to say what is the cost effect which can be more than 10 times what they would invest at the beginning. <laughs> so uh, um, probably over a period of time, if we calculate the cost implication over a period of time, probably going for a good quality installation is uh, less uh, costly. Less. Uh, less costly. Yeah. That's, that's true. Good. It might be looking at as an investment at the beginning. Um, but later on, um, when there is no operation today, uh, I will give you an example in, in another example in Middle East. Um, 20, before 2006, 2009, there, there were buildings with sort of very, very high quality. Yeah. Later on, the more the number of buildings came, more number of competition came in, the quality also slowly reduced. So today, uh, we go to a building and find there is no measurement possibility. We do not know, the meters don't work on the panels. The, we do not know what kind of harmonics, what kind of loading is available on the panel. So these are some of the common problems what we face. Had they chosen a right product at the time of installation, no one bothers to do it, change it, at the, uh, change it during, the, uh, during the operations. So when, then, then there is no data when they need it. So that is very, very important that we make electricity panels in such a way that we have the data also captured and stored somewhere so that it can be useful for us to maintain it over a period of time. Yeah, so that's that's very important. Okay. And you design a panel for 25 years and then the equipment inside the panel doesn't work for more than 10 years, which is not good. Yeah, we have, uh, we'll go through some of the questions. There is a question yeah. from Mr. Omnar. Can harmonic lead to harmonics lead to malfunction of electronic trip units mounted on low voltage circuit breakers? If yes, any case studies you have? Okay. Uh, okay, I will give you this case study. Um, I was talking you were talking about looking at your video also on the RCBs. So I will also give you the same uh, kind of a solution. Uh, same similar kind of uh, issue which I have come across in one of the hotels where they use a big conference rooms where it, it is used for a lot of teleprinter or tele, uh, you know, the monitors are used for every table and every chairs where they use. Yeah. So they had a problem of RCB tripping very frequently. They were only changing the RCBs one, two, three. It was, it was continuously failing. It was tripping. It will suddenly during a conference, one circuit would trip. And every time it is a different prop, different circuits. So they were not having a clue what was happening. 
they were actually using an rcb for a ac circuit but since there are so much of electronic loads and lights in that particular circuit it was actually type b and type b plus frequency higher frequencies were making those um, rcb strip erratically so there is a possibility that low voltage circuits can have a potentially be influenced by harmonics and higher frequencies and it can trip so that's that's one uh, case study which i have seen it myself so that could be shared was shared worthwhile so yeah. it it affects it affects the low voltage side that's what i wanted to say okay so uh, we have uh, the next question from mr purushottam uh, up to pcc level i triple 519 for uh, uh, downstream level load side which standard has to be followed for recommendation 61000-2-4 is the thing for the equipment level so at the point of common coupling it is i triple 519 and then at the equipment level we can go for 6 Six one triple zero dash two dash four. I think this uh, the IEC. This one is talking about the limits of harmonic emission by individual equipment. Individual loads, right? Correct. Correct. Compatibility. Say for example, uh, let us say for example, uh, maybe a VFD or some kind of an LED light, or let's take it as uh, two cases. Uh, yeah. VFD is two less sixteen amps. Uh, what is the limit uh, of in uh, recommended in the IEC, or as well as for LED lights? What is the limit uh, of? No, it is nothing to do with the LED lights as such. There is no standard to say that it is LED lights. It is the standard. Uh, maybe I have to share the standard, um, which will say. One minute. Let me take this thing and give it to you with this information. Uh, I triple five one nine. Yes. So this talks about uh, uh, voltage, power frequency, uh, power frequency variation, and harmonic up to fifty and transient voltages uh, in I IEC six one triple zero dash two dash four. So it talks about power frequency. It talks about harmonics. It talks about there are limits for this for harmonics also in 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 uh, uh, in this particular uh, standard. So we may have to open the standard to tell you which limits it works for. So okay. it talks about it. It talks about the voltage. How much of voltage deviations can or allowed? How much of dips and short interruptions are allowed over a one day period? And then how much of harmonics is allowed? To come in or or to come out from these equipments, so it talks about all the three uh, cases in uh, in this particular standard. Okay, that's great. So we have uh, uh, the next question from Mr. Rajan Menon. Is any sector mandatory to continuously monitor I triple E five one nine? I triple E five one nine is uh, to be monitored continuously because it is whatever you do as a test, it is done for one week. and then if you continuously monitor because the loads are not going to be the same the loading pattern is not to be the same the dynamics of the upstream grid also changes so it is always better to monitor continuously and know what is happening in your system so if someone comes and monitors ieee 519 for one week and then they give it it is not necessary that every week the same results would come the every week the results can change so so that's in for that reason at least i triple 519 needs to be monitored continuously we have uh, professor mahendra chiliguri from velur uh, uh, institute of technology he has raised your hand uh, professor you can ask your question or you can have an interaction yeah uh, good afternoon can you hear me yes okay i think you rightly mentioned just before that you know that uh, this poor quality monitoring for one week is only gives you a limited understanding of what happens on the grid or at the customer side and in fact recently we have recommended to posoco to that at sp solar power plants the power quality cannot be monitored once a week for a year and then assume that everything is fine so this has to be extended especially at large solar power plants to understand the uh, power quality issues both from the grid side as well as on the customer side but there is one more issue that i would like to highlight to the, all the audience the power quality is not at only at pcc the power quality problem at the customer premises is like another different issue altogether and uh, there is a lot of interaction between the 
solar inverter and the vcbs and the solar transformers is taking place leading to a lot of failures on the vcb sites as well as on the transformer side and hitachi recently came up with a transient suppressor solution inside the transformer and we have not seen you know how it will be going to solve the problem that is one thing that i would like to highlight one more point that i would like to mention here is that leds are emitting very high frequency emission which is not monitored by anybody at this moment not yeah. only leds evs or evs and other equipment also going to emit this emission and uh, the harmonic uh, emission factor the thd is, right now is only up to 50th and it has to be changed to measure the emission coming from ev as well as led and other inverters so that the supra harmonics effects can be studied on the grid side or the customer side and uh, my question was which i posted in the uh, in the q and a box is that what is the provision provided at the customer side to do qq monitoring because when we did the study at certain solar plant there is no provision to measure power quality at any place and then some of the customers they are not agreeing to you know allow the panel to be open touched and meter to be connected and whenever they want to measure they are measuring in a very a non safe way like you know me- measuring at ct side or measuring at the meter side and i have recommended to ca that you know that uh, power quality measuring facility should be there at every customer side so that anybody can just come in and plug in their meter without disturbing without uh, you know anybody objecting that we are going to you know disturb the plant all these things so unless there is a mandatory requirement for peak to measurement at the customer site especially large industrial and commercial site there will be a lot of issues in monitoring and lot of people also don't want to monitor and those who want to monitor they are only monitoring for one week and assuming that everything is fine for one year yes yes in fact um, i i agree with you because that's why i said that the time of the project the there has to be some kind of a mandate or some push from somewhere else maybe from a consultant on the, or during the project stage to definitely comply to by putting a good power quality meters at the different levels where they feel uh, deem important and then it becomes a lot of this data from these meters can be a very very valuable data during the operations for the people to get benefited out of it but that is still it to come in india and i hope uh, you know this this wise thing will uh, dawn into every every projects very soon yeah uh, so hari actually i shared the uh, standard iec 61 61024 yeah yeah which shows uh, i think you, you may be able to see the yes. uh, the yes. levels yeah uh, what is your say is it possible to explain a little bit more on this particular thing okay uh, in say for example it it talks about the limit compatibility level so it which means voltage tolerance related to nominal voltage in class a that is an industrial environment with a better, with less amount of in a where the short circuit class a class 1 and class b is again based on the uh, where our where our loads are there in the grid so uh, so in that situation where whether it is strong grid or weak grid and when a very with very higher short circuit or a lower short circuit levels then we have class a and class 2 class 3 differences and then you have the limits for these places so that is why you said we, we have a very clear difference for the voltage tolerance voltage imbalance and the harmonics if you look at it it talks about 5 7 11 13 17 17 and up to 4950th harmonic what should be the percentage of harmonic that particular load can emit okay so finally if we if we really uh, think uh, the products which we which we use uh, in this application this this table 2 is not complied may not be complied <laughs> that's what i'm saying okay, okay. may not be complied also i would like to just have a look on what is this class 1 class 2 class 3 let, let me open the uh, the definitions so that yeah. you know it is easy for us to understand probably better uh, class 1 on class 2 and class 3 open it yeah i think so it's already there, mentioned in one ppt class 1 means sensitive load yeah 
yeah this is here it is the explanation of class 1 class 2 class 3 class 1 uh, applies to protected supplies and has compatibility levels lower than those on public network it relates to the use of equipment uh, uh, very sensitive to disturbances in the power supply for instance electrical instrumentation in laboratories some automation and production equipment some computers etc okay so class 2 applies generally to pcc and also to it uh, Uh, environment of industrial and other uh, non public power supplies uh, the compatibility levels of this clause are generally identical to those of public network therefore components designed for supply from pri- private uh, public network may be used in this class of industrial environment so then class c class 3 is uh, this class applies only to ipcs in industrial environment industrial. it's a higher compatibility level than those of class 2 for some disturbance phenomena for instance this class should be considered when any of the following conditions are met a major part of the load is fed uh, through converters welding machines large motors and uh, frequently started load very rapidly so basically yeah. the definitions are very clearly given and uh, the table 2 is uh, explaining the limits am i am i correct uh, to read it this way correct 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 okay thank you thank you very much let me stop the sharing of the screen uh, we have a question from mr uh, uh, what is the best standard for in plant power coupling for harmonics i don't get this question uh, yes uh, i think uh, probably we will go to the next question what type of filters i triple or iec recommend for mitigation of harmonics no there is no recommendation of filters in ieee 519 it only says whether you are complying or not complying and the how the mitigation is done is purely an exercise with the consumer and then the best part they will have to choose whether they need to go with passive filters or an active filter uh, and where where is the location they want to put it actually purely depends on the uh, consumer themselves okay okay uh uh on what parameters uh, can we we can differentiate whether strong grid or weak grid okay it depends on the short circuit level uh, at at the point of common coupling and uh, I, again i say i i would say that b- depending on the short circuit level isc and the il value how much load your average load you are taking depending on that you are given allowance or limits on uh, harmonic gen- harmonics uh, w- amount of harmonic what you can generate so considering that there is nothing called a strong the beyond this value is strong and beyond this less than this value is a weak grid it is nothing like that but as far as the ieee 519 is concerned it gives clearly between up to isc by il value as 20 this is the limit 20 to 50 this is the limit 50 to 100 this is the limit and 100 and above that's the uh, another limit so it very clearly defines the limit depending on how we calculate from the isc and il only so higher our isc value lower the il value then you are at a very high uh, very strong grid whereas higher the isc value and higher the il value itself you are at a weaker position in your, in the grid so it depends on your limit varies based on that okay thank you the next question from mr danavat uh, this capacitor bank at user and can reduce tdd and thd or just to improve voltage profile only i would ask uh, ravi to answer this question if he is there i am not sure um ravi sir are you there uh, uh no probably if mr ravi can raise the hand then i can uh, make it make yes. uh, make him out is not there yeah. uh, he is not there okay. uh, but 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 uh, the yeah. harmonic is harmonic can be potentially um it is not suppressed in a capacitor bank if i'm correct uh but it can potentially only increase in 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 the in, in certain environment with capacitors and inductors uh ravi has come in right now here ravi sir can you please put some uh, some of your thoughts in this as well see it depends on the available isc at the installed capacitor location 
we can get the resonance so capacitor is prone for resonance so we have to unless we make the reactive power uh, uh, no delivering system that is capacitor banks virtually as a inductive load it is a possibility of resonance and even with a fully linear load also plain capacitor bank create the harmonic so it is required to be the system connected with the series reactor with the adequate linearity unless there is a problem with the harmonic virtually it will be increased and other way also flash over of you no know, due to resonance also it is possible so plain capacitor will not mitigate harmonic yeah okay, okay. thank you thank you thank you ravi sir thank you mr ravi then uh, the next question can you please explain how can how we can inter incept the tdd concept at design stage ha huh. uh, we, we will have to do a power quality study you know proper power quality study and say that this amount of harmonic should be reduced we should understand the short circuit levels at the pcc we should understand uh, uh, the load pattern how how much it would be say for example uh, for a in a place where we have a very low short circuit value and if our loading is also pretty high then isc by il value is very low and we are in a more of a weaker grid area so these needs to be understand and a poor correct power quality study has to be uh, has to be done before uh, before the inception of the project itself during the design stage i would like to add one more sentence into the uh, answer as the first answer first you should use a product which is not producing too much harmonics <laughs> that is that is i that is very much unavoidable in the present day circumstances but still uh, that's a good wish <laughs> because you know there is no point in you know uh, the, the polluting <laughs> trying to clean it up it, it's like putting a putting a garbage in front of our gate and then trying to clean up you know it will never get clean <laughs> yes exactly uh, the, so the next question uh, how do we say tdd unless and until until you install the device at point of common coupling the testing of the meter used uh, should be mandatory for sorting 7 days with sample rate of 167 samples per cycle do we have in our regulation uh, Uh, Mr. Hari, I would say you can also read the question. It's a little bit longer question. Let me let me let me also try to do it. One minute. Amrit uh, Lal. One minute. I'm just trying to see. First question now. First question. Overall answer. No. What are the scenario of consumer? Okay. See. Um, one minute, Mr. Amrit, right? Yeah, uh, just trying to check. Uh, in QA, how many? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, how do we see TDD unless and until you install the device at a point of common coupling? Of course, we need to measure to uh, to understand what is the TDD. This is point number one, and the device, what wherever we are measuring, we should put the. uh il value also to calculate tdd so the device measuring device should have the capability to enter the il value and then it calculates the tdd value this is point number 1 uh the point number 2 is the meter should be mandated for storing 7 days yes the data can be either stored in the device or it can be exported into the computer uh, as and when it is getting stored so there is a possibility ultimately you need to have seven date of data either in the device or in the computer as a database so that is that should be possible uh, definitely it is uh, it is required and with regards to the sample rate which we are talking about as i said there is no standard for samples number of samples per cycle 
but it is very important that we have a reasonable standard or a reasonable sample uh, samples per cycle say 167 samples is also sometimes it is good for a, if there is a class a device with that uh, and then we should be in a position to take the readings with those parameter with those uh, measurement devices that is possible but ultimately measurement of tdd is very very important and we need to measure and we need to find it out from the from a device okay thank you thank you we have uh, sir jitendra kumar rathor mr rathor you can uh, unmute yourself and ask the question yes sir okay uh, thank you sir very nice presentation by doctor sir my question is that uh, regarding harmonic uh, in india or particularly i am talking about the maharashtra as a distribution company has injected the voltage harmonic to the consumer and consumer are in injecting the current harmonic in the system so is there is any regulations or there is any means compulsion to install the power quality meter to the consumer or are there any condition in the abroad to the distribution company for framing the penalty or incentive you can see those consumer they are maintaining the suppose they are maintaining the harmonic level then they should be given incentive in the tariff or those they are violating they should be penalty in the tariff so if such kind of uh, penalty are this uh, proposed or such kind of penalty is imposed by the regulation to the distribution company and compulsion to the consumer then definitely the harmonic level can be reduced because it is unnecessary you can say the uh, affecting the, the consumer those are using the linear loads and now nowadays government and we are also promoting the solar integration and solar yeah. integration is just a dc source and because of this dc source est consumers those having the heavy, heavy consumptions they are migrating towards solar but there is not any regulations so do you have any idea apart from india in abroad in other countries are there such regulations or penal action see, by, see uh, i i got your question see it is very yes, very typical here the ieee 519 mandates voltage harmonic is the responsibility of the utility and current harmonic is the responsibility of uh, consumer yeah. for example for example if a consumer switches off his power supply and checks the voltage harmonic and if the voltage harmonic is high he should take it up with the utility to say your voltage harmonic what is given is high right and if they use a legally compliant device like class a measurement device then they stand a chance to put their case into the utility in the right way but now unfortunately what is happening in the name of regulation utilities are trying to police only the current harmonics and not the voltage which they are giving right which we are responsible for so there is a small thin line of difference which we need to fight it out and come out but i think over a period of time this will evolve this is my uh, this is my opinion as such yeah. yes sir, sir actually I... what why am one miss what i am asking is there such kind of regulation apart from india other side you have observed or you have any case study whether the government has imposed the penalty if you have that information that you can share there is nowhere nowhere governments or or the utilities are putting a penalty for harmonics it is okay. followed by the consumers only in india we are policing this activity with the help of regulation this is what i am trying to say so okay. that has to be a shift in the way in which we are approaching the problem so for us if government says i will penalize you i follow otherwise i don't follow yeah so that's that's the major difference as such okay yeah. thank you sir can i uh, basically can i comment to this yeah uh, can i comment to this taking their responsibility properly so if the if every consumer is uh, taking care of uh, their responsibility or properly do their responsibility such problems will be automatically will reduced and life of the equipment will go up will go up correct as a result uh, the returns in an industry will be much better yes so gobak yes. mara i have yes. one alternative this one can i interfere with this yes please yes. yeah see policing as hari said rightly policing is only applied to the consumers on the other hand there is no policing to the utility company utilities <laughs> so utility is also having the shared responsibility there is no regulation so far applied for example consumer is injecting the current harmonic okay not exactly injecting due to the injection of current harmonic system impedance gets increased 
due to the increased impedance voltage in distortion is also increased this is a problem neighboring consumer gets the higher distorted voltage into their system system even the consumer is with completely linear load and getting the higher distorted voltage he is facing the problem with the higher voltage distortion he is going to be a victim in this situation so in this condition it is possible to penalize the higher injecting harmonic consumer utility is having the responsibility to reduce the system impedance and give the uh, good quality supply to the small consumer am i correct or not so utility is having the responsibility and the IEEE 519 it is clearly given the you no know, guidelines regarding this but unfortunate that there is no utility abide with this regulation thank you thank you thank you thank you so we will take one more question and close the webinar for the day the last question probably we have lots of questions uh, in the chat box in the in the q and a uh, probably all the questions we may not be able to take up but further we can continue this uh, this uh, webinar maybe the the second session we can continue and maybe the third session we can talk about the solutions because yeah. uh, here we are only talking about the problem so solutions problems. also should be discussed uh, probably we will continue this program so uh, the last question uh, mr kamlesh kumar at pcc which value of uh, I guess you should consider individual feeder of substation or overall value of substation IAC having many feeder. What are the scenario at the consumer level which can create voltage harmony? Yeah, it the IAC values usually take into consideration the upstream transformers and the transmission lines what you have until the point of common coupling. So that needs to come from your upstream transformer and the impedance of the uh, transmission line or the distribution uh, cable or the overhead line, which needs to be considered. So you have an upstream transformer impedance and then uh, short circuit level. And then you also have the cables and the card, either it is underground cable or overhead cable coming up to the point of common coupling. And then at that point of common coupling, you still have um, uh, a short circuit level, which needs to be calculated. So that is purely uh, a calculation from uh, depending on where, how far you are from the uh, substation, which you, which is feeding your loads. What are the scenarios at consumer level which can create voltage harmonic? The higher harmonic, current harmonic you inject into the circuit and depending on the imp upstream impedance, it can potentially distort the voltage waveform and then that is why the voltage harmonic also increases. So that's that's another way of looking at it, uh, looking at it, Kamlesh. I think I hope I have answered this question. Yeah, uh, uh, is it possible we can take the one one more question? The last question, yes. uh, yeah. Mr. Uh, Rohit Khare, uh, you can unmute yourself. So, Rohit, yes, you have raised your hand. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for your sir, such a nice presentation. I'm Rohit uh, from this side from IIT Kanpur. So, my question is related to to a transmission congestion uh, risk from the discom perspective. How we can mitigate that kind of problem? And my second question is related to the total demand distortion, as you said, uh, that uh, because we are managing a dynamic load variability, dynamic variability of the load, particularly with the increase in integration of the renewable energy sources and electric vehicle, so which can exacerbate the total demand distortion. So how we can mitigate that risk? And uh, my, my first was about the transmission congestion from the discount uh perspective. Yes. Uh, can you elaborate a bit on transmission congestion because I, I, I honestly I have not heard about this probably uh, then I can um, I, I would see if I'm able to reach so out transmission that congestion a transmission congestion is mainly when the the generator is uh, sending certain amount of power which was uh, uh, tied up with certain power purchase agreement and with yeah. the bilateral input to the buyer and in due to the case suppose the generator is generating the 200 megawatt and due to the transmission congestion, it is not uh, able to send that amount of uh, power, not not, amount, not that amount of power into the grid to the buyer. Yeah. So due yeah. to the transmission congestion, so uh, what are the, um, because at that same point of time, if we are trying to implement some new infrastructure of the overhead line, it is not possible for the short in, in the short duration. 
so how we can uh, resolve this uh, problem sir because this is so most... I, i i think i think it is a dynamism of the grid um, i may be wrong um, but i can also seek help if there is uh, anyone who can answer this but i think it is the dynamism of the grid which is actually creating the uh, creating the congestion which means there is a change of impedance in the circuits on the all over the grid right so that is why it is uh, limiting the power supplied by the generator to be supplied by the generator so probably that's that needs to be addressed by the impedance so utilities should always or the distribution companies should always be considering this uh, impedance on their system because of Uh, various loads coming loads and generators coming into the load coming into the system they should also be taking sufficient responsibility i don't see any utilities or actually working on changing their uh, uh, the impedance of their system in a regular manner because i see most of the short circuit levels what is given by many of the utilities at various points or same for the last 20 years whereas this grid has grown very vast in the last 20 year 20 years or so so that's that's how i see it um, um, more dangerous from the utility side for not doing any action on that because uh, actually my concern is this because if, if i um, so someone told me about if, if we uh, better forecast and we if we better schedule the power this risk can be uh, this this risk can be uh, uh, we can hedge that kind of risk but i think that uh we can uh, if by by just providing the only if we are only just providing the better schedule and forecasting we are yeah. not increasing the capacity of the power we are not increasing the st um, strength of the power that can be transferred to the transmission line so that's why yeah. it's a very challenging task that we yeah. um, see even if we forecast maybe some ai can help in future for us to uh, do this but you know it is very very difficult to ascertain someone can forecast at at one level in the network they can forecast this could be my um, x amount of loads which can get added up in the in the grid and what would be the impedance and things like that but in actual it may be different as well so how forecasting is accurate also matters uh when it comes to uh these kind of solution but some kind of ai could help in future but i am not very sure about it let's see let's wait and see on that yeah thank you sir and thank you mr rohit apao sir has raised uh, his hand he is actually traveling probably oh. i don't know whether he will be able to speak apao sir uh, thank you sir uh, i am audible uh, some noise yes. okay 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 thank you uh Uh, it's a very nice session haribala uh, my my friend has yes, uh, given a very nice session and there are two type of mitigations involved uh, one is mitigation for compliance of harmonics level as per regulation or to to be enforced by the distribution companies another thing is internal mitigation mitigation that is whether you mitigate whether you are complying with the regulation or not your own equipment are likely to failing because of higher level of harmonics emitted by the uh, individual equipment like vft drives or ups as per 61000 iphone 2 iphone 4 so we the thinking the tdd actually the mitigation is devised in such a way that the consumer release helps a lot you can say in fact i i can i say i have worked with mr ravi and we have uh, evolved a white paper on it we can upload it in our group the thing is if you if you meticulously see the total distortion tdd it the numerator is thd denominator is the load current that is a percentage if i have 30% harmonic and if uh, if we come to the tdd the denominator is the annual demand current so if you have higher demand then the 30% will be reduced by 15 per 15% to the consumer is having a, always having a, i can't say it's a manipulation is a statistical point that consumer can uh, devise a reasonable uh, base demand that is the annual demand load to uh, what do you call to Uh, comply with the regulation without any anything without doing any harmonic mitigation that's a, one of the wisest thing the consumer can continuously 
do and uh, device is uh, uh, total uh, device is uh, annual demand to contain the tdd so one more thing is the supplier's grid can be made so strong and strong it all depends upon the market driven mechanism when there is an industrialization taking place in a place that it get automatically strengthened by virtue of its uh, power plant or the uh, power transformers the substation for example the 10000 mea is occurring in a one kv grid in tamil nadu at one place at it sector and the same one kva one sorry one kv distribution it occurs 2000 mea only in a rural distribution so how can we ask the distribution company to enhance uh, power transfer in rural distribution to 100 mea 200 mea it's not possible it all depends upon the thing it's a as per ravi's it's i i, I partially agree with ravi's uh, statement that the distribution company is responsible for water harmonies where this water harmonies coming into picture and affecting the other linear load people they are not affected by the grid it is because of load harmonies created by so many people in the grid especially the consumers the the actually the uh, grid do not uh, create harmonies they are all having linear devices because of ev and the solar as well as power electronics we are having so many pollution to the grid we are we can't blame the grid alone that's my point i think we can have some more discussion in the next we can have some more webinar another part to the next session to discuss much on it i don't know whether i am audible uh, during the journey but what i can say is consumers are already liberalized by the harmonic distribution measures enforced by the distribution companies through the central authority regulations that mitigation available is you ascertain your total demand load annual yeah. total demand and you mitigate at the point of common conflict we don't bother about the lower thing but actually what happens when they find it difficult to cope with the failure of efd drives or sensitive drives, they automatically go for the harmonic mitigation to lower side also it's a compulsion that's what i can say i, I am not able to communicate i don't know whether i am audible or not thank you mr gopal thank you thank, thank you, thank you. your point with me thanks for mr hari thanks for mr ravi uh, also uh, mr chilikuri uh, thanks for all the all the you know interesting questions we have further i think about 16 20 questions are there if we start answering each question there will be another list of questions finally Probably shows we will how important this program. topic is. <laughs> yes. It shows so how we can continue this program as you know session two, session three, and uh, I think there is scope for even including one and a half hours each session. Probably ten sessions we'll be able to do. Uh, the next <laughs> session we will have a panel discussion as uh, Professor uh, Shilikuri uh, uh, told. So uh, probably if all are free, we can make it in the coming week. Uh, Uh, for the time being uh, thanks for all mr hari if you have any conclusion uh, you can continue uh, no uh, and i i as a conclusion part i should thank uh, the whole group whole participants it was um, it was very very uh, enthralling session for me because it was lot of information which i also learned quite a few, uh, in, in this session and then i'm happy to be a part of uh, uh, this group and we will continue to interact if there is anything we uh, i am there in the group whatsapp group itself so you can address to me maybe i can i can also uh, take up the other questions at a personal level yeah thank you very much thank you very much for the opportunity yeah bye next we we end the program thanks for all the participants let's wait for the next week's program thank you very much thank you